Hello everybody, this is Carol speaking. I hope you are doing well today and welcome to our PolyWorks webinar. And today we are talking about how to leverage the use of scripts in your inspection sequence. And let's welcome Linda Catherine Gilbert as she is our presenter today. Linda is a member of the technical support group. And let me remind you that if you have any questions dur during the webinar, please use the questions panel. I will be monitoring the questions throughout the webinar. And as usual, we will have a short Q&A session at the end. If we don't have time to answer all of the questions, we will get back to you by email. And yes, we are recording this webinar, so it will be available for a later viewing. So Linda, it's all yours. Thank you, Carol. Every time we're making a new piece inspection, we simply repeat the same measurement steps to obtain new measurement results. But sometimes our projects also require additional steps. For example, the operator has to export a PDF report to our network. How can I ensure that this manual step is not going to be forgotten by the operator on every next piece? Well, the answer is to add this step to our measurement sequence. By adding a simple script, which will automate the export, I will ensure that we won't forget this step. Let's take a look at the following example. So I want to explore that report, but I don't know where to start. One thing you have to know, if you can launch manually a function, it also triggers a common line. So what you have to do is let PolyWorks do the heavy lifting, lifting by using the common history. So every time you click or activate the function, for example, select plane C, actually is triggering a function. So what you're going to do is manually export the PDF report to our network. As I mentioned, I'm gonna close this report. As I mentioned, this triggers a command line. So you can, from the command history, copy this line and add it to our export report macro. In a command line, if you look in between the parentheses, you have a short description of what the command line is doing. So this one will export the selected formatted report to a PDF file. And afterwards, you have a list of three arguments for this one. The number of arguments will vary with the commands. And what is exactly an argument? Well, you can see arguments just like a recipe to execute the command line. So this one has a few input or output arguments, and they are either optional or compulsory. So if we look here at the first argument, this one is actually saving our report one onto the network. Afterwards, the second argument it's opening the PDF report after the export. The two possible values are on or off. I'm going to change this one to off. And the third argument, it's the object name. If specified, it overrides the selection. So I want to keep, even if it's an optional one, I want to keep report one since it's the report we are going to save. So we've just created a simple macro of one line that is added to our measurement sequence. So let's run a second piece inspection. So we are using sequence one, which is the sequence I've created with my macro inserted at the end. We've seen that we can integrate a simple microscript to our measurement sequence to automate the export of this report. 
if I look in my network file, oh, I can see that I have still only one report created, which is the current piece. What happened actually is in the macro, we are exporting the PDF report using report one as the name of the report. So it overwrites the previous report. So we could adjust the report name and use, let's say, the piece name instead of having only report one. So what I will do is change the value one here to the, the piece name. And again, just as a reminder, if you can do something manually, you can also create a script for it. So I will go in the piece properties, and just to trigger the piece name, I'm gonna add in front here, LCG. So here we have the command line. I'm gonna write piece, and as you can see, every time you create a word, you have a contextual menu of all the possibilities that are available with this, the same syntax. Properties, standard. If I look at the description here, this command line actually sets a specific standard property. I'm not interested in changing the name. I'm really interested in reading that name. So if I look under get, get this one reads or get a specific standard property. So that's the right one. The first argument is an optional one. So if omitted, uses the current piece. This is correct. Since I will change piece after piece, I want to be sure to use the, the current piece. So I'm not going to write anything in the first argument. The second one asks you on which standard property are you looking for? Piece name, serial number, part or order number. I'm looking for the piece name. And the third one, as we can see, it's an output. Oh, I'm sorry. It's an output argument. So it, this command line will actually give me the information, but I have to store that information in a variable. A variable is just a placeholder for information. But before using a variable, you have to declare every variable that you're going to use in that macro script. So here I'll call it pname. Then I can use pname as a variable. Now, P name contains the piece name I'm interested in. So I will add the value of P name in my report name. When you want to use the information that is contained in a variable, you have to use the dollar sign and then select the variable. So I will save this macro script and use it on the next piece. As we can see now, my report piece five will be added as soon as the inspection, the measurement sequence is completed for my piece five. So we've seen that we can automate one task that will ensure that we won't forget to save this new piece inspection report to our network. But you can also analyze the inspection results. I'll use a second example for this one. Let's say you want to flag that the part is actually being rejected on a specific company criteria. Okay, so after inspecting the part, you need to accept or reject a part based on that criteria. Let's say that since we have a sheet metal part here, we are interested in the trim edge contour position. So I will be setting my criteria as I allow only one point out of 10 to be out of tolerance to reduce the number of rework on these parts. So what I would do as manual steps I would start by opening the control reviewer. Look inside of the control view I've created for all the trims. And I can see here at the bottom of the control view that we have actually two failing controls out of 10. 
which means that since my criteria is maximum one, I'm actually rejecting the first piece. Manually, I would then, as an operator, go in the piece properties, change the approval status to rejected, and apply. As I mentioned earlier, everything you can do manually will trigger a common line. So I will copy this line and add it to a new script we are going to insert to the measurement sequence. But actually, we did a, logical, a few logical steps before deciding to reject the part. Allow me to use a simple graphic to explain the logical workflow we've done together. We, first of all, open the control reviewer to count the number of failing controls. After, afterwards, we compare that number to our company criteria, which is one out of 10. If the value is smaller or equal to one, we then decide to approve the part. If it's greater than one, we then reject it. This seems really simple, but by writing the flow of your, your actions, it will help you a lot to actually create the macro scripts. So step one, we have to count the number of failing controls. If you remember, when I looked in my control view, this does not trigger any command, right? Because it was a visual action or a mental action. I looked at the number of failing controls. Well, we have other tools in addition to the command history to help you. If you look under help, commands, this will bring you to a web page where you have a list of all the available command lines that exist. You could use the contextual menus we have here or run a search. Let's say I want to count, and I can see that we have multiple counts that exist. Let's be a bit more precise. I'm looking to count the number of fails. Well, the description says, get the number of controls that fail the tolerances for selected measurement objects. This is exactly the command I need. If we look in the arguments, the first one is an output, so I will need a variable to write this information. So let's declare that variable as out of tolerance. I'm going to write the first argument in out of tolerance. And the second one is the object names, if specified, they override the selection. Since this one is optional, I don't want to have to write the name of every trim edge. What I will do is select them. So I'll leave the second argument empty and ensure that just before running this command, I select only my trim edge comparison points. I'm making sure that I select none before since uh, you don't want to have any additional objects selected beforehand. Okay, so now if I go back to my simple drawing, we've counted the number of failing controls. Now I'm inter interested in comparing that value to our company criteria. To do this comparison, we are going to use an if loop, which is a conditional statement. If you need more information on the different types of loops or how to, uh, what is the syntax for variables, everything that's linked to our macro script language, I recommend you to look in the macro script reference guide. For example, if we run a search on unconditional, we have here controlling the few flow of execution. Let's go have a look here. Oh, there we go finding right away the type of loops we are going to use. So in this case, we have if a certain condition, else if it doesn't enter the first condition, it will enter in the second portion of the loop, and you have to close the loop afterwards. So it's really well explained in here. And if you see, the number of pages is quite short. So I think in an afternoon, you could be able to read the entire document. 
and it will give you multiple examples on how to create simple scripts. So if the value of out of tolerance is smaller or equal, oops, smaller or equal to one, then I'm going to approve the part. So I will change the arguments here. The first one, if omitted, uses the current piece. Since it's optional, I'll leave it empty. The second one, instead of using rejected, because my conditional statement is saying if the value is smaller than one, I then approve the part. Else, if the first statement is not, is not approved, then I'm going to reject the part. And as I mentioned, we have to close this loop. So allow me to test macro by changing the approval status back to undefined. I will delete the previous command so we have a fresh start to see how the macro command reacts. Okay. So let's run the step-by-step -step of this macro script. First of all, no selection, making sure all the trim edge are selected. Then we, in those selected objects, we make sure to count the number of fails, which is two, exactly the same value we've looked in the control reviewer. Here in the if loop, we can see that since the value of out of tolerance is two, which is greater than one, it enters in the else portion of the loop. And my part is set to reject. Let's have a look in the part approval status. It is also set to reject. Excellent. So let's leverage the use of this macro script in a new piece. And this is the snapshot I've added, so I'll just keep it. Excellent. I can see that here I have one point out of tolerance. Let's confirm by looking in the control reviewer. Yes, exactly one point. One point that is failing. And let's also confirm in the piece properties it's set to approve. Once again, we've automated some operations that are now systematized during our measurement sequence for every piece. To continue your learning process with macro scripts, we also offer on our technical support zone, let me show you the website. So on PolyWorks website, you have the technical support zone right here where you can log with your email address and password. We have in the macro zone that I just mentioned, a list of multiple different macros that are offered for specific workflows. The one we are going to use today is the clean data. This macro has a short description of what it does. And let me explain it to you. We are going to actually from the position of the CAN model and the data that are actually aligned, we are going to select all the data points that are further away than a certain value, a max distance, and delete all of them. Quite useful when you're actually scanning, for example, a part, a sheet metal part that is held by its fixture, just like the example we have here. So what I will do, I've already downloaded this macro script and I will add it at the end of my measurement sequence. Instead of creating a new one, I will import the file. Excellent. The 
those uh, macros that you have on the macro scripts are a bit more complicated or elaborated than what we've done today. Okay, we can see that these, this one has multiple variables that are declared at the beginning, but it could help you to learn a bit more complex, complex workflows. Okay, so if I run this macro, we'll see that we'll have, first of all, a pop-up menu asking you what is the scan data and the CAN model you want to use, as well as the max distance. So this value could be changed to six millimeters instead of four. And it will delete all the data that is not required inside of that max distance. Great, I will run a second piece inspection. Again, using sequence one that has my clean data macro. This time, um, to the opposite of the previous one, I use the probe to pre-align. The previous one were only imports. Now it's extracting everything, and when we get to the last step, the macro runs with the same six millimeter max distance I've previously added. Perfect. So during this webinar, we saw how we can use MacroScript in our measurement sequences to automate some specific tasks. So this summarizes how you can leverage the use of automated scripts in your inspections. Thank you, Linda. And we do have a few questions that are coming in. So let's go with the first one. Um, I noticed, okay, so this is uh, regarding the measurement sequence. I noticed when in the insert pop-up menu, there's also a conditional statement option in there. So why not use that instead of the loop in the macro? Oh, okay. Um, if I understand correctly the question, I'll go back to the, the example that had the loop and allow me to reopen the script I've created here. So in this, in this script, I have a if loop. And if I'm correct, the question is asking, why didn't you use a conditional statement in the sequence instead of having one in a macro? Well, the difference between the two, when I'm using it in the macro, the operator do not have to do any manual, any manual uh, steps. For example, he doesn't have to go and, and look in the control view to count the number of failing controls. If you use a conditional statement in the sequence, you must ask the operator a question before, and then that will trigger in which direction the sequence will go. However, if you need any additional information on how to use any of these tools that we have here in the insert, right-click insert button in the sequence, I recommend you to have a look to another webinar we've created a couple months ago, um, not a couple months, but a, a, bit, a bit earlier, which is customized measurement sequence for piece inspection. It would give you a great deal of information on how to customize that measurement sequence. Okay, thank you. And we'll squeeze in one more question in here. So the user states that he has basic programming, uh, program, programming skills so uh, what is the language used here in, by Polyworks to create the scripts? Okay, thank you for the question. Um, Polyworks has its own macro script language. And if you have basic understanding of script, you'll see it's a really similar language that all the other softwares will be using. It's quite simple. And as I mentioned, inside of 150 pages, you have a complete description of our own Polyworks macro script language. Um, if you've never done any programming, it's also simple if you follow the same steps I've used in this webinar. If you do have some basic skills, you'll see you'll, you'll get a, a hang of this uh, language quite, quite easily. Thank you, Linda. And this is all the time that we have for the questions. So yes, this webinar has been recorded. It will be available on the InnovMetric software website. Navigate to the support section. It will also be available on the Metric Software channel on YouTube. And our next webinar, we will talk about how to include 
datum target areas to your datum reference frame alignments. So a very hot topic. Uh, it is scheduled for November 8, 2018. Thank you for joining us this morning, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.